This video is meant to introduce you to just some of the things that we see and do in the beautiful city of Porto and the Dodo Valley on my A Taste of Northern Portugal experience. So stick around. I'm often asked what my favorite city is and without a doubt, Porto is high on that list. After Lisbon, it's probably Portugal's second most popular city, and there's no shortage of reasons why. On my A Taste of Northern Portugal experience, we stay in a wonderful boutique hotel that's perfectly located and central to it all. This hotel is just footsteps from the Dodo River in a gorgeous area known as Ribeira. Full of wonderful restaurants, great opportunities for shopping, and stunning viewpoints of the Dom Louis I Bridge, Ribaida is the perfect base from which to explore Porto. This magical city's most obvious landmark is a double-deck metal arch bridge that spans the Douro River between Porto and Villanova de Gaia. The upper deck is partially available to pedestrians, but also for local trams. The bottom deck is not only available to pedestrians, but also for cars and other street traffic, and the views from the bridge itself are out of this world. When in town, you should make an effort to explore both sides of the river, if only to get spectacular views back to Ribaida and the rest of Porto, which cascades down the valley and to the river's edge and has a very unique architecture that is extremely photogenic. Also look for opportunities to capture the distinctive Ribello boats, which are now mostly used for tourists, but in years past were the main form of transportation for wine and people to reach the big city from the Dodo Valley to the east. As I always say, you'll do well to get out early in great light before the tourist crowds, which are sure to build as the day goes on. Here's a pro tip. It's important to note that Porto is quite hilly, and so there are a lot of inclines and steps, and quite a few of the roads and walkways are made up of often rough cobblestones, so be extra careful when navigating its streets and sidewalks. Wear good, sturdy shoes whenever out and about, and I'd highly recommend using quality walking sticks if you're at all unsure of yourself. See the link in the description below for a quality set of walking poles that I recommend. While in Porto, we also participate in a wonderful port wine tasting and tour at Caves Burmaster. It's one of the oldest brands in the industry. You simply can't beat the location of their cellars, which are right at the base of the Dom Louis I bridge on the Villa Nova de Gaia side of the river. A local guide walks us through the entire process of harvesting and making port wine, and we end with a tasting in a beautiful setting. After our time here is done, we take an amazing train ride from Porto's extremely photogenic Sao Bento Terminal to the tiny station of Ferrao. This ride takes just over two hours and is simply spectacular. Here's another pro tip for you. Get to Sao Bento Station at least a half hour early because you'll surely want to spend time exploring its interior where there are large panels of gorgeous azulege tiles and you'll see these throughout Portugal. Now that you're on the train, sit back and enjoy the ride east, which is mostly along the stunningly beautiful Dodo River Valley. Fidao is probably the smallest train station I've ever seen, but it's in one of the most beautiful settings I've ever seen too. Our driver picks us up at the station and takes us and our luggage the just five minute ride or so up the hill to nearby Quinta Nova Wine Estate. Staying at this private hotel is just one of the many highlights of this tour, and it's my feeling that a great hotel is one that you won't want to be in a rush to leave. And this is the idea and basis for all of my Alacampania experiences. Spend time just walking the grounds, sitting on the terrace, enjoying the views with high quality wine, and taking advantage of the property's other facilities, such as a small chapel and swimming pool. We also enjoy an incredible outdoor meal on the property where the chef is happy to let us indulge in his many unique creations. We also make the short drive to the nearby town of Pinhao, where we spend time walking this tiny riverside village, which also has a small train station accented with a number of beautiful azulejos 
you'll certainly want to see. Next, we make time to walk the riverfront and you can even make your way across the nearby bridge for a different perspective. We then take the train from Pinhao to Pocinho, which is the eastern terminus of the Douro railway line and this community developed with the arrival of the railway back in 1887, which formally continued eastwards to Spain but closed just over a hundred years later in 1988. We also make it a point to actually get on the Dodo River and take a boat from Pinhao back to Ferrao. One other thing we do is enjoy an incredible al fresco lunch at Quinto do Tedo, which offers yet another spectacular view of the Dodo River and Valley, and where we participate in a wonderful wine tasting and tour with a local expert. Needless to say, there are many, many other things to do in Porto and the Dodo Valley, but one can't do them all, at least not on a single trip. But with my local tour operator, we've tried to include some of the very top highlights in this trip. If you have an interest in this part of the world, then do consider joining us on my next A Taste of Northern Portugal experience. Link in the description below. Question of the day, have you been to Porto? Have you been to the Douro Valley? Let us know in the comments below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to check out the other ones here on the channel, and especially in my Best Travel Tips playlist. Next, share it with others and give it a big thumbs up. Finally, be sure to check out my latest physical books on Amazon, they make great gifts, and head on over to the continentaldrifter.co website for more travel and photography tips, and to get your free download. And remember, drifters, life's too short not to travel.